Mark, Bradford's final pre-season game of the season. Um, what are your thoughts on run-out against Leeds this afternoon? Um, very similar to the, the Jewsbury run-out. I think it was a real worthwhile exercise. Um, I think it's shown us some, some good things, some bad things. Um, and I think it's highlighted some, you know, some areas that we need to we need to be better at. But overall, I think it was a real worthwhile exercise, and uh, yeah, pleased with what we got out of it. Strong defensive performance in that first half at times. It had to be because we give him that much ball. You know, if you give a quality side like Leeds the ball that we did, then you're going to have to defend as well as we did. So, you know, uh, the, the try just before half time, I, I thought was a little unfortunate, but it. Was it unfortunate or was it Leeds that was you know, ruthless with uh, their execution? So, yeah, li little areas, but uh, you know, overall we're all right. Some of the things you've just said that you might not be happy with is that I think Le Leeds scored two tries on the back of either a penalty or an error. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to look at the penalty count because it were, it were heavily against us uh, and I'm not about to criticise referees or, or anything. We'll look at ourselves first and, and foremost. So, yeah, I thought there were a couple that were 50-50s that... You know that that was that was we was done for. But again, I'll have a look at that and, and digest that. I mean, the the little bits of sloppiness, uh, both offensively and defensively, are the ones that uh, I wasn't too impressed with. Uh, but again, we'll have a look at them. There's, you know, there's absolutely no dramas whatsoever. We'll uh, we'll take from what we can and build into next week. I think I had the penalty count eleven five. Just one penalty to Bradford in second half. I hope you're right because I had it the same. There you go. Uh, on that first half, Mark, he started with. Deck pattern and Tom Holmes, your thoughts on that partnership? Yeah, I thought they did all right. You know, um, I, I don't think they, they got the field position and and the amount of ball that they wanted. Um, but I thought they did all right, and I thought they, you know, they they needed the opportunity to have a have a, a go with each other, just as you know we we played with different halves against uh, against Dewsbury. So the whole point of that was to try and see everybody, let everybody have uh, enough time to express himself and stake a claim for next week. Jack Walker, very lively. Jack Walker's very lively, yeah, he's a good player, isn't he? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he shows his quality at times and, you know, um, I think I think Jack's attention to detail is, is very, very good. So, yeah, we're impressed with what he did. Um, came off after around about 55 minutes and that, that was always the plan, so, yeah, good stuff. Do you feel a little bit hard done by with the AJ Wallace to, to Kieran Gill, we still have trying? Oh, again, Mick, I'm not going to criticise referees in a pre-season trial. It's it's one of them. You know, the blokes a lot closer to the action than me and you are. So um, he made the call. The call's what it is. I I didn't think it was a forward pass, but I'm going to say that. Uh, Chef probably just said it was. So, you know, it's it's one of them. It's it's not important. The fact that we uh, brought Leeds down the way we did and, and was able to come up with that pass, uh, you know, is the uh, the main focus for me. Are you happy with the the fitness? Yeah, I thought we looked fit. You know, again, we've got some some big minutes into some of our middles. I mean, Brad Foster there was, you know, massive again on his on his minutes on the field, and you know, again, he's playing against a well, the second best rugby league team in this country. So um, yeah, he's gone for massive minutes again and, and conducted himself really well. Great to get you know 50, 55 minutes into Bodine Thompson. But as I say, another 55 into Jack Walker. Um, yeah, boxes ticked in that area. Second half mark, 6-6, six, six. Um, you could probably say, didn't we have that white flag kept going right till the end again, probably a little bit unlucky with George Vonnegut Jr's disallowed try. Scores, scores don't mean anything in pre-season trials, I know what you're saying, and, and you're, you're right what you're saying, um, you know, we've built a lot of what we've done this year on, we call it the four E's, so effort, enthusiasm, excitement with and without the ball and energy, uh, I, I thought we saw that in abundance today. Even in the tough times where, as I say, a quality team like Leeds had, had a lot of ball and a lot of possession, some of it due to our errors, some of it due to, you, may, you might say, indiscipline from giving penalties away. But nevertheless, they had the ball. For whatever reason, they had the ball. And, you know, we, we dug in and we, we stayed connected for the majority of the time. And, uh, and we tried to solve the problem through defensive effort and, and energy, which, I, yeah, I'm very happy with. Any injury concerns coming out of today's game? No, no, everyone's fine. That's it. Mick, that's the most important thing in pre-season trials. You know, as coaches, we love to have a look at what we've practiced. You know, for the last eight or nine weeks. But um, I think every coach will say that they've got the fingers crossed and the toes crossed that everybody comes through pre-season trials unscathed. And yeah, it, it looks as in, unless something comes up that hasn't already. 
but it looks like we've managed to come through and scave, which is really good. In terms of you starting 17, you're, you're 19 for a game against Whitehaven next week. How much of, of today and what you've seen today has, has cemented some positions and, and starting shirts? Yeah, it has. It has. Um, you know, again, we've had some young blokes out there, just just like Leeds have today, and uh, you know, they're at a different stage of the journey. They know that. Um, of the senior boys, um, some of what I've seen today has positively put them in the in the frame for next week, and some of what I've seen today has put a question mark on some people as well. And again, that'll stay confidential. But I, I probably know 13 or 14 of my 17 for next week. Just final one from me. Obviously, there is a dual reg partnership between Leeds and Bradford. Um, obviously, you've, you've you've had a look at some of those young Leeds players who probably aren't going to have the future in the Super League week in week out. Yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't, I, you know, obviously I've, I've watched the game like everybody else has, I'll, I'll look back on that, but I won't look back on that until I've finished doing what I need to do for Bradford, so, you know, yeah, we've got a partnership and, and you know, it's great, um, the two clubs are working really well together, um, but I need, I need to look at Bradford first and then, of course, I'll, I'll take a look at some of the, the guys that might be on the periphery, but, you know, some of the guys that people think will be in that bracket, uh, you know, there's a couple that have played today that, that might have played themselves out of that bracket and into uh, into Rowan's thoughts, so we'll, we'll see on that. Mark, Mick mentioned uh, Jack there, and obviously you know from, from last year there were, there were odd games, sort of like say Whitehaven at home, York at home, where the attack looked really turgid, but Jack seems like a real unlocker. Is that something you were really looking for? It seems like he can make, he's got the hands, he can make the breaks to sort of get through defences where maybe last year there were times when the back struggled to do that. <laughs> Um, I think well, Jack's a quality rugby league player, you know, and, and he's played at the top top level. He's been really unfortunate with injuries and and things which have been well documented. But you know, Jack Walker can play rugby league, and uh, it brings a new dimension to us. Uh, you know, we didn't have an out and out fullback at times last year, um, and and any rugby league coach will tell you it's a lot easier to play with one uh, and a couple of half backs than it is to play without. So, uh, yeah, I thought. Uh, Offensive work and our offensive shape and structure uh, look good today, and we, uh, as I say, we brought leads down at times. Mm, yeah, definitely, there were a few chances to be on the um, uh, couple of tries, and obviously, like you mentioned, that unlucky one with AJ and Kieran. Obviously, AJ showed a few bright moments. So how big is it for for you guys? I know he looked likely to to go to Super League clubs with the win that fell through. How much of a positive have you you've got AJ Wallace for twenty twenty three? Um, yeah, likely to go is a, a tricky one. I, I, I don't know if they were ever likely to go, but yeah, it was rumoured to go and there, there was interest, of course there was. And again, there's going to be because he's a quality rugby league player, but um, yeah, I thought we saw glimpses of what AJ AJ's capable of. Uh, and I still, the exciting thing about AJ and a whole, you know, a bunch of our players in there is the, the excitement for me is the fact that there's so much development left in them. Yeah. You know, there's there's so much more we can get out of them as the season goes on and, and, and as we roll in and become fluent with games week in, week out. So, AJ falls into that bracket. But, yeah, I thought it was uh, I thought it was good at times today. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm speaking of the young lads, obviously, George, uh, Fanga Jr. had some really bad moments when he came on. Uh, unlucky with that last bit at the end and, obviously... <laughs> yeah, the little that is where he accidentally knocked the ball in the, the, the lad's face when he, when he knocked on, which is pretty much his only error. I mean, takes a through dad's pause on, on that front, but the fact that George has got that spike about him despite being such a young lad, that must be positive for you that the young lads aren't. None of them shirk it, they, they can't, can hold their own against men, if you like. Um, no, I disagree. Oh, yeah, no, I disagree. Um, you know, there's, there's something internally that we've done this year that if you give a penalty away when we've got the ball, uh, that's that's not yeah. okay, um, and consequently, every player that does it will be fined. So George will cop a fine for that. Um, I thought it showed real good glimpses. Um, you know, I, I thought the try in, in the corner would have been fitting for his efforts, um, but again, it, it was a call that was made. Uh, he made a lovely break, and he's getting some banter in the dressing room at the moment about being caught by by a middle, um, whether it was a middle that caught him, I don't know, but yeah, it showed glimpses of what he's about, it showed glimpses of his talent and his quality, but um, yeah, it, it doesn't need to be giving yeah. penalties away when we're in possession and, uh, you know, I've already had that chat with him. Yeah, that's fair enough. And obviously, speaking of young lads, obviously Leeds had a few of them themselves and last year it was kind of largely a very young side that came to Oddsall. This year obviously there was, particularly second half, but they also the likes of Reese Martin and Richie Myler playing how good was that for you, to, for, for your last bit of show up against, against lads like that that have got 
such Super League experience and Super League regulars, it, it felt like a probably a stronger Leeds team that played you than last year, and you probably got a better score against them, which I think that was a real positive, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, I've just actually said to the players in there, if, if we'd have beat a young Leeds team comfortably today, it wouldn't have done anything for us. No. It would probably lulled some people into false sense of security and, and made them think things that they don't need to be thinking. So, you know, Rowan Leeds, Chev, you know, the, the guys have, have all been respectful, put a, uh, you know, respectful team out who, you know, have had a dig and, and you know, it's, it's stood everybody in good stead. I think Leeds will get out of it what they need out of it. You know, I know they've got a couple more weeks before round one of the Super League and it's certainly uh, been a really good exercise for us that we needed as well. Definitely. And obviously... You mentioned that you weren't going to um, risk anyone in pre-season, but obviously it's a real shame for Brad England looks so bright in that opening friendly that he's obviously not featured the last two. How is Brad doing? Is it just a little knock that you're at risk or is it something more serious? Yeah, I mean, you seen today he's running water. You know, he's, he's yeah. trotting about like Bambi. So um, <laughs> he's got a bang on the ribs. It's a cartilage thing. It's, it, there's no break in there. There's no long-term you know, worries about it. Um, if it had copped a, a bad shot on that you know, area today, would it have... Made him doubtful for next week, yeah, probably so. So, you know, that, that ability to have that longer rest period and, and let them ribs, ribs recover a little bit better was, uh, it was just a, a smart decision to make, I think, and, and one that we made early in the week, so we was well aware of it. Fair enough. And then just finally for me then, Mark, obviously, uh, you've had the two friends. I know you obviously won in the three. It was unfortunate to open up last week. Do you, do you feel undercut in any way? Are you pleased with what you got the two fellas in the field ready for... Ready for Whitehaven next week, the Championship Yeah, I mean, ideally, we, we planned for four, uh, four with Boxing Day that, that went amiss as well. So, you know, there's no complaints whether we're undercooked or not. It, it is what it is. We, we've known for long enough that Boxing Day wasn't going to happen. And, um, you know, Mother Nature beat everybody, barring the guys on, on 4G last week. So um, we are where we're at. You know, we're, I'm, I'm content with where we're at. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to lick our, lick our wounds tonight. I, I'm just said to the lads, enjoy a, enjoy a beer and the night with your, your families and whatever. Um, and tomorrow morning starts the uh, pulling that in bits and, and having a real in-depth look at it and, uh, and the preparations for Whitehaven, which is exciting.